Um, hello, everybody. My name is Rishnara. Um, I'm from Mid and West Wales Fire and Rescue Service. I'm not an operational firefighter. My role is community safety. So we go out into the community and look in at initiatives to prevent fires happening in the first place. My colleague here is with me today, Andrew Rees. He's the brave one. He goes into the fires rescuing people. So um, he's the operational firefighter. Um, we're here today to talk to everybody about home fire safety, something that we don't always think of. Obviously, spending a lot of time in our homes, um, we need to ensure that it's safe from catching fire. Where we spend a lot of time in our offices, in the places we work, there's lots of um, legislation where we have to practice a fire escape plan. But where we live in our house, there's no such law in the UK. So here we are today talking about home fire safety. So you may be asking, why? what is a home fire safety check? When we deliver the home fire safety check, we look at a few um, vulnerable groups. And at the moment, the fire service, we're looking at the older persons, um, single adults and single parents, individuals living in deprivation, um, smokers, people with mental health or physical disability, and individuals who have issues with alcohol and drugs. All those categories for us, um, we deem vulnerable and at high risk of having house fires. Um, we've been doing the home fire safety check for a number of years, but we've not been very good in getting to the people who need it the most. So for us, we're prioritizing our program to ensure that we deliver the check to people who need it the most. Okay, so just very quickly, what is a home fire safety check? It's basically an assessment of your house, your home where you live. Um, we would walk around the property looking at fire dangers and provide solutions to some of those fire dangers. Um, we'd look together then with the occupier, sit together with you, your family, um, and say, look, if the smoke alarm did go off in the middle of the night, how are you going to get out of your house? Do you know exactly what to do and which way would you escape? Part of, the, part of the home fire safety check then is providing free smoke alarms. I don't know if anybody here has not got smoke alarms, but come and see us because what we've got is an information stand outside. So if you want to leave your name and your details, um, we can come out and fit smoke alarms for you all free of charge. So basically the smoke alarm is the only device in your house that's going to wake you up um, in the middle of your sleep if you were to have a fire. Um, all this is free of charge. We pr provide um, fire safety advice as well. So not only fitting the smoke alarm, but also telling you what to do in event of the smoke alarm going off. Um, look at your bedtime routine. So before you go to bed at night, making sure you switch everything off, unplugging all your electrical devices, putting the cigarettes out into the ashtray, closing all the doors before bedtime. And just a little statistic there. Carmarthen delivered three th over 3,000 home fire safety checks in the last financial year. And we believe those fi fire safety checks are the cornerstone of keeping Carmarthenshire safe, keeping Mid and West Wales Fire and Rescue Service area safe. Okay? So these are just some of the fire hazards that um, when we go out to the properties, some of the things that we see. So you can see there's some um, block plugs there overloaded. So the fire service, basically, we go out to the properties and we find a lot of these block plugs, yeah? Some of you are nodding your head, so I'm assuming you've probably got a few in the house somewhere. These come back, the firefighters bring them back burnt, and it's because people overload them with all different electrical devices. They overheat and they can catch fire. So what we would say then is to throw these away and get yourself these extension leads, which are much safer to use. So these are some of the equipment that we can give out to make sure that home is much safer, okay? The second picture there is showing us an iron, iron with the iron facing down. There's smoke, there is a smoke alarm in that property. It's in the wrong place. And more importantly, there's no batteries. It's open. The person's taken the batteries out. Again, firefighters will tell you, lots of the houses that they've been out to, people take the batteries out of the smoke alarm. Just some nasty pictures of some um, fires that have taken place um, and the, basically the impact of what a fire can do. And some of these fires have just happened from a cigarette smoldering. Again, too many plugs in one socket, overheating and causing fires. And a kitchen fire. Somebody had left the stove on, walked away, answered the telephone, forgot the cooking was left on and caused a fire. 
for us, the six areas that we cover, Kamal and Shah, um, there's some statistics there to show you the incidence of fires. So as you can see, since 2010, they, there's been a huge reduction of um, house fires and, and small incidents as well. And that's because of all the home fire safety checks that we're carrying out. I'm just going to talk to you quickly about a case study. Um, this house here, um, firefighters were called out in 2012 to a house fire to a 37-year-old gentleman. Um, this is what the firefighters came, came to when they were called um, on this 999 call. The neighbors alerted the fire service. The smoke alarm um, went off in this property. This was a gentleman, 37 years of age. Um, he'd often sleep on the floor with some cushions. He couldn't afford the electricity or the heating in the house, so he'd often have candles um, at the property. Um, there was also some alcohol bottles around as well. He fell asleep one night with the candles lit. He was, he was also a heavy smoker, so they're unsure whether it was the cigarette that caused the fire or if it was the candles that fell onto the duvet. He noticed that the duvet was on fire, dragged the duvet into the kitchen, um, and tried to put the duvet out. But unfortunately, when the firefighters got there, he was found facing, head facing down, and it was too late. The smoke had got to him before the flames. Sorry, this is just the kitchen where the firefighters came and, and found the remains of the duvet. So obviously lots of sad stories, and that's just one of many um, sad stories that the firefighters go out to. I think in the last year, we've had four fire fatalities just in the Mid and West Wales area, um, and some of those could have been prevented. And we believe if that gentleman had perhaps a fire retardant bedding pack, another sort of equipment that we provide, perhaps it would have taken longer to, you know, given him longer to escape then, and perhaps he could have um, still been alive. Some of the pictures that we've got up on there are the safety intervention equipment that we provide as a fire service. We've been given funding from Welsh Government to provide um, this equipment as part of the home fire safety check. So as well as the smoke alarm, we've also got the extension leads, um, fire retardant bedding packs for people who are heavy smokers or smoking in bed. It could be because of mobility issues or disabilities that they're um, smoking in bed. But just to make that safer, we can't give advice on stop smoking, but we think at least we can minimize those risks. So we would provide um, a fire retardant bedding, a smoker's throw for people who are, again, mobility problems, uh, smoking in their armchairs. They can have a smoker's throw to make themselves safer. Again, we've gone into properties where we've um, identified people who are smoking, cigarette burns all on their dressing gowns. We had an incident in Swansea where a, a lady was smoking in her armchair, fell asleep, dropped a cigarette, and unfortunately the city caught, um, caught fire, her armchair, sorry. So she dragged her armchair across the, the living room. The whole of the living room was singed. She was lucky to be alive. But when the firefighters got there, they took her dressing gown off her, gave her a wash, and counted all the burns in her dressing gown. There were about 60-odd burns in this one dressing gown that this lady had on. Now, social services had a care package with this lady. They were going into the property three times a day, but didn't think or didn't pass this information on to the fire service where we could have gone in and delivered a home fire safety check, bespoke information, bespoke advice to make sure she's safe at her house. Okay. The other equipment that we provide as part of the home fire safety check is the hard of hearing alarm. And basically, it's, it's like the smoke alarm, but people with hard of hearing or who, or who are deaf have this device, and I'll just show it to you now. And all it does, the, the vibrating pad goes under the pillow. So when they're fast asleep, this will vibrate to alert them that the smoke alarm has gone off. The um, flashing strobe light would also um, go off to let them know that the smoke alarm has gone off. So this is their device to let them know that the, the fire alarm has gone off. And that would be their um, you know, sort of sign to get out of the house. So we fit all this free of charge. There's other equipment that the fire service um, purchased from time to time. One device is called the stove alarm. And again, for people who um, may put the cooking on and walk away or forget about it, um, or sometimes when we're busy, when we get forgetful, we can go back to the cooker because the stove alarm um, will obviously trigger off and let us know that the cooking is still off and we can go off and switch the cooking off. So there's lots of fire safety devices that we can have to um, install in the house to make sure that we're all safe in the house. Some of the partnership working that we do, we're already in partnerships with some of the agencies here today. 
Um, as a fire and rescue service, we can't get to everybody who needs the home fire safety check, but we believe the agencies here today can get to the people who need it the most. So again, it's working through partnership um, that we can get to the vulnerable, high-risk people who need the home fire safety check and help us prioritize. So we've got agencies such as Age Concern, Care and Repair, British Red Cross, lots of other agencies who not just refer into the fire service for us to go up to the properties, but also are trained up to actually deliver the home fire safety check for themselves. So. For the, for the fire service, we will train agencies to actually go into the properties and deliver a home fire safety check. And for the voluntary sector organizations out there today, there's a payment um, available from Welsh Government to, um, to deliver those checks as well. Okay, just some of the benefits that some of the agencies have told us that they've um, seen from tra being trained up in delivering the checks. Um, they, they gain a unique experience, a unique skill in actually um, delivering a home fire safety check. It's something that's quite unique and you can put on your CV. Um, we meet a shared agenda. At the end of the day, we both want the same things. The, home, the, the service, the fire service want to ensure that people are safe in their homes, as would um, the agency. Um, we can prioritize our program working together to make sure that we meet the people who need the home fire safety check the most. We've also been informed that it's, um, it's less agency involvement, so it helps the person who's had the home fire safety check. Um, the people that we want to get out to are not going to telephone the fire and rescue service and ask for a free home fire safety check. So if there's a caseworker or a carer or somebody there, perhaps they can be the one to ring up and, and ask for a home fire safety check or refer into the fire service. And also for us, the agency staff are the ones who are more, more likely to get a response from clients, their clients, as opposed to the fire and rescue service. These are just some of the agencies that we've got on board with us who are delivering the home fire safety checks. I know a few of you are here today. Um, we've also got an information stand outside. So if, you're, if you haven't already had a, fire, a home fire safety check, then please can you see us at the stall, put your name down, get your details down to us. We can come out and deliver a home fire safety check when it's convenient for yourself. The other thing that's quite important about the home fire safety check is when we come out, we take a lot of information and you may be thinking, why are we taking a lot of this information? It's mainly for your safety. Some of the questions that we ask are regarding disability and mobility problems. And if you did ever have a 999 call, if you did ever make an emergency call to the fire and rescue service, while the fire engine was making their way out to the property, a lot of this information would be flagged up. So if you mentioned that there was somebody disabled in a wheelchair, sleeping in the downstairs room um, at the back of the house, all this information can be flagged up whilst the engine is on its way. Again, it's protecting our firefighters and saving valuable time to make sure we can get to the property to rescue um, people living in the house. So that's quite important as well. Um, so for us, our ethos is home fire safety. Go home tonight, check if your smoke alarm's working. If they're not working, then ring up the fire service. We can come and fit them free of charge. The smoke alarms that we provide have got a 10-year battery guarantee. So again, you don't have to worry about changing the batteries. Because um, at the end of the day, sometimes fire safety is the last thing on our mind when we've got a lot going on. So um, my last sort of thought for you guys is please go home tonight, check to see if your smoke alarm's working, test it. A lot of the smoke alarms that we go and change, believe it or not, um, have not been cleaned. So now we're giving the advice on making sure that you clean your smoke alarms as well. Just once a week, just give it a hoover around and, or get somebody to do that for you to make sure it's working. Okay? Um, has anybody got any questions about the whole thing?